Good evening. I want to welcome you to our uh, Monday Thursday worship service. Uh, great to see uh, each and every one of you here. Uh, if you're visiting with us tonight, I want to say a special welcome to you. Uh, glad you're here. We'd love for you to come back and uh, worship with us uh, tomorrow night, uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, also want to welcome those that are worshiping with us uh, on Facebook Live. Uh, thankful that uh, you can be a part of this service as well. And uh, remind you about our uh, Good Friday service tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Uh, it will be in our Family Life Center, uh, not here in the main sanctuary. And then uh, we'll have uh, both of our normal uh, Sunday morning worship services uh, at 9 uh, and 11. Um, if you don't have a bulletin, I uh, encourage you to get one. Our communion liturgy uh, is printed in the bulletin tonight. Uh, and uh, I want to invite you to join with me uh, in our opening prayer that is also printed there in your bulletin. Let's pray together. Holy God, we come to worship in the gathering shadows of Jesus' suffering and death. We come with friends, the men and women who have followed Christ in every place and in every generation, to live once again the story of service and betrayal, of weakness and courage. We come to witness your love in action. Be with us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn this evening is number 286, O Sacred Head Now Wounded. Please rise as you're able and join us again. That's number 286. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this night, for the privilege of gathering together to remember, to celebrate, and to share. We give you thanks for the journey we have been on with you, from the manger to the temple, from Egypt to Galilee, from our darkness to our light. We are so thankful for the table that you have prepared. 
May we continually remember what you have done for us. Please join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading tonight comes from John's Gospel, John chapter 13, beginning in verse 1. Hear God's word. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, <clears throat> he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I've set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I started uh, working in the construction business, way, way back uh, in uh, 1992, I, I didn't have a clue in the world what I was doing. Uh, I had majored in marketing at Auburn. Uh, and uh, I had majored in marketing not because I was passionate about a career in sales. Uh, I majored in marketing because it was the easiest possible degree uh, that you could get in the school of business. That, that was the whole reason why that was my major. 
Uh, and uh, I would have been much better off. It would have better prepared me uh, for life as a general contractor uh, if I had gotten a degree in building science. But that was never, ever going to happen because there was way too much math uh, involved in uh, getting a degree in building science. So after I graduated, uh, went back home to Gunnersville and uh, I started working for a contractor there. Uh, and I had to learn the construction business uh, from this guy. Uh, and I had to learn it from scratch. Uh, and one of the most difficult things for me to try to grasp was estimating, uh, figuring the cost of a construction project, which if you're a contractor, that's pretty important. Uh, and in order to do that, the first thing I had to figure out was how to read a set of blueprints. Uh, and that didn't come naturally to me. Well, one day, my boss, who was a, uh, a pretty patient soul, uh, he was uh, estimating a, a project that uh, they were about to bid, and uh, he was figuring the wood framing on this job. And I was sitting with him, and he was trying to teach me how to do it, and uh, I wasn't catching on, and I was getting frustrated. And so uh, he called an audible. Uh, he wanted to try something else to see if I could figure this out. And so we left the office. Uh, and we went out to a, a project that uh, was under construction. Uh, and we started walking all around this building that was being built. And uh, we would look at different parts of it. And he would show me where that part that was being constructed was shown on the blueprints. And I remember him saying to me that estimating was really just about understanding how things are built. He said, if you can see how it's built in your head, in your mind, then you can estimate it. And after that day, I understood. Everything clicked after that day because seeing it made all the difference. Now, in this passage of Scripture from John 13, uh, as the disciples were uh, gathering together with Jesus for what was going to be their last meal before the crucifixion. Uh, Jesus was still hard at work trying to help them see. The disciples still didn't understand what was about to take place. Uh, and you might think that Jesus was getting frustrated with them uh, by this point. Uh, because he had told them over and over again what was going to happen when they got to Jerusalem. Uh, and Jesus knew exactly what was coming, uh, which would have filled anyone but him with an overwhelming sense of fear and dread. But instead of being focused on that, instead of being focused on the suffering and his death that he knew was coming, as any of us would have, instead Jesus was focused on his friend. In those last hours that they spent together, Jesus continued to show them his unconditional and his sacrificial love. He wanted them to see it. He wanted them to understand it. He wanted them to experience it in a very real way. Now, I have always loved what John chapter 13, verse 1 says. Having loved his own who were in the world. He loved them to the end. He loved them to the end. Now that Greek word there, it can also be translated as he loved them perfectly. He loved them with all of the fullness of love. And as we read this story, that's what we're witnessing. As Jesus washes the feet of his beloved friends, and then he lays his life down for them and for the whole world on the cross. We see the fullness and we see the perfection of his love for us. Now, when we read the story of the Last Supper in the Synoptic Gospels, uh, in Matthew and Mark and Luke, <clears throat> uh, the focus in those Gospels uh, is really on the meal that they shared together. Uh, it's on the uh, breaking of the bread and the giving of the cup. Uh, but it's different in John's gospel. Uh, in John's gospel, the focus is not on the meal. Uh, the focus is on the washing of the disciples' feet. 
we see here that Jesus was a, a humble servant to the very end. And this humble act, I think, is the ultimate example of that. Because this task that Jesus does, washing his friend's feet, this was the work of a slave. And so as the passage told us, Jesus took off his outer garment. And he wrapped a towel around his waist. And then he got down on his hands and feet and he began to wash the filthy feet of his friends. And as he did that, He was fully embodying his role as a humble servant. And through his actions, he was setting an example for his disciples to follow. He was trying to help them see what sacrificial love looks like. Jesus said, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I've set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Now, when we think about Jesus washing the disciples' feet, I think that really helps us to see and it helps us to understand the nature of Jesus' love. Because you see, Jesus knew that Peter was about to deny him three times. And he still washed his feet. Jesus was fully aware of what Judas was doing. But he still knelt down and he washed the feet of his betrayer. Jesus also knew that the minute he was arrested, all of the disciples were going to run and hide. But that didn't stop him from washing their feet. Jesus loved them unconditionally until the very end. They didn't deserve it. They had done nothing to earn it. But he loved them anyway. And that's how he loves us. And when Jesus had finished washing their feet, he asked the disciples a very important question. He said, do you understand what I've done for you? Do you understand what I've done for you? Jesus was showing them a blueprint of what it meant to follow him if they could just see it, if they could recognize what he was doing. And this example that Christ gave them was about more than just washing each other's feet. This humble act was about showing them how they were supposed to love each other. And we hear that later in chapter 13 when Jesus said, a new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everybody will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. If the disciples could simply understand. If they could recognize and see what Jesus was doing for them, then they could follow his example. And that would show to the world around them what the love of Jesus Christ was all about. Now, I think it's just as important for all of us to hear that same question tonight. Do we understand what Jesus has done for us? Do we truly see that example that he has given us to follow? Now, I struggled to learn how to estimate until I could really see how something was built. Seeing it made all the difference. Jesus loved his disciples to the end. He loved them to the utmost so that they could see and so that they could experience his love and so that they could go out and share that love with the world around. And for all of us tonight, as we come to Christ's table, as we celebrate this blessed sacrament of Holy Communion once again, 
I pray that the Holy Spirit would open our eyes to Christ's presence. Because Christ is here. I pray that we would experience the love and the grace of Jesus Christ in a fresh way tonight. And that we would truly come to understand what God in Christ has done for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to uh, find your bulletin. You don't have to be a uh, member of this church to uh, come and celebrate this blessed sacrament tonight. This is Christ's table, uh, and it is Christ himself who invites all of us to come. Uh, I invite you to join with me in the uh, prayer of confession there that's printed on that first page. Eternal and merciful God, you have loved us with a love beyond our understanding, and you have set us on paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Yet we have strayed from your way. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed through what we have done and what we have left undone. As we remember the lavish gift of your grace, O God, we praise you and give you thanks that you forgive us yet again. Grant us now, we pray, the grace to die daily to sin and to rise daily to new life in Christ, who lives and reigns with you and in whose strong name we pray. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. But Christ suffered and died for us, was raised from the dead and ascended on high for us, and continues to intercede for us. Believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity, and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave us grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When we had turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us in him your crowning gift. Emptying himself that our joy might be full, he fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with the scorned and forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Christ gave himself up, he took bread from the table and he gave thanks to you, Lord. And he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat, all of you. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, when the meal was finished, Jesus took the cup from the table. And again, he gave thanks to you, Lord. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and drink, all of you. This is my blood, 
the blood of the new and everlasting covenant that is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O oh Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit when all of us gathered here tonight and on these gifts of bread and wine. Father, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, by your spirit. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father now and forever. Amen. Paul. Christ's body given for you. Christ's body given. be serving by intention. We'll place a piece of bread in your hand as you come and if you dip it in the cup. Uh, we have prepackaged communion elements uh, uh, if uh, you would rather have those. And uh, after you have received the elements, uh, you're welcome to spend some time at the altar in prayer. Uh, and as you return to your seat, uh, just ask you to remain in an attitude of worship. We'll serve this side first and then this side. I invite you to come.
Our closing hymn is going to be number 340, Come Ye Sinners, Poor and Needy. Again, that's number 340 in your hymnal.
charms. Receive this benediction. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you this night and forever. Amen. Go in peace.